Welcome to the pilot episode of the Tombstone Tourist webisode series. The Tombstone Tourist webisode series is your monthly escape where I take you on a guided tour to visit the gravesites of anyone who is famous, infamous, notable, and noteworthy. On today's episode, we are paying homage to prolific B-movie producer Herman Cohen, who rests peacefully in Section 24, Lot 395, of Clover Hill Park Cemetery, which is located in the affluent Detroit suburb of Birmingham. Born on August 27th of 1925 in Detroit, Cohen's film endeavors began at the age of 12 when he obtained a job as a gopher and then later as an usher at Detroit's Dexter Theater. From there, he went on to become the assistant manager of the renowned Fox Theater in Detroit. After a tour of duty with the United States Marine Corps, Cohen obtained a job as the Detroit Regional Sales Manager for Columbia Pictures. In the 1940s, Cohen moved to Hollywood to work in the publicity department at Columbia. In the 1950s, he started getting involved with the production aspect of filmmaking, beginning with the epic 1951 film Bride of the Gorilla, in which he was the assistant producer for that film. Another film he was the associate producer for was the 1952 film Bella Lugosi Meets a Brooklyn Gorilla. Continuing on through the 1950s, Cohen's big break came with the epic 1957 film I Was a Teenage Werewolf. This was a low-budget B-grade film which cost less than $100,000 to produce. Not only that, the film got blowout reviews by the critics because of the shoddy props used, the ridiculously bad acting, and not only that, the insane one-liners. But surprisingly, it became a smash hit, taking in more than $2 million at the box office. The film stars a young Michael Landon as a troubled youth Tony Rivers, who turns to a hypnotherapist to cure his sudden bouts with aggression. Instead, the evil doctor gives the young teen an experimental elixir that turns him into a werewolf. The concept of this film became an instant hit for the teen horror genre. Before the film came out, Cohn was warned that his masterpiece would annihilate his reputation and career, but he simply ignored the pessimistic attitudes of his colleagues. Despite the negative feedback, Cohn made an uncredited cameo appearance in the manner of Alfred Hitchcock. Following the success of the low-budget epic I Was a Teenage Werewolf, Cohn went on to create other motion pictures where the theme always included teenagers being turned into some sort of horrifying monster. Some of those other films include the 1957 film I Was a Teenage Frankenstein and Blood of Dracula, which was also made in 1957. As the 1950s were coming to an end, Cohn relocated to England and continued the madness of creating gruesome films about the sadistic indulgence of serial killers. In one such film, the 1959 feature, Horrors of the Black Museum, a crime writer arranges a series of repugnant slaughter fests using devices such as, but not limited to, a pair of binoculars which jab razor-sharp spikes into the unforeseen victim's eyes. In 1968, Cohen began to work with the aging and downright temperamental actress Joan Crawford in the film Berserk. In this feature, Crawford plays a circus ringmaster where the performers are gruesomely murdered one by one. The last film Cohen produced was the 1973 comedic horror film titled Craze. This film starred Jack Palance, Trevor Howard, and Diana Doors. After retiring from the motion picture industry, Cohn returned to the Detroit roots he left behind in his teen years and purchased the Fox Theater. By the late 1970s, Cohn was involved more with writing and film distribution than with film production. He founded the domestic distribution company Cobra Media in 1981. In 2002, while hospitalized at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, Cohn lost a tragic battle with lung cancer. 